Adam Stoughton from My House to Yours. Welcome to EMS at Sea Level. Uh, today's episode is uh, a specific celebration episode, if you will. I'm here with the CEOs of ITAC and Kogiscan to explore the news that um, the news of the recent acquisition. First of all, thanks for joining me. We've got Vincent, CEO of Kodjiscan here, and Peter, CEO of ITAC. Guys, before we get into the details of the acquisition, I wanted to explore a little bit the relationship that the two companies had prior to the acquisition and kind of how you got together and the motivation for that. Vincent, can you tell me a bit about what you knew of ITAC over over recent years and kind of what, what brought the two of you together? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, hi, Phil. Thanks for having us today. Um, I mean, ITAC and Kajscan has a long history. Uh, we've known the people from ITAC uh, probably 15 years or so, uh, even before when, before Peter joined uh, ITAC. And um, actually, I knew Peter uh, even before that from his uh, universal days. Uh, so Peter, like uh, most of us, was in the industry for a long time. Uh, a long time, we, we, we know very well that industry. And um, uh, Peter went to, I think it was our first year, uh, we were at, at Apex and we couldn't get a spot at Apex, so we were in a hotel room. And uh, Peter came to see our technology at that uh, hotel room. And, uh, you know, as, as I joke uh, with uh, with everybody, I say it started with a one night stand at that uh, Apex show. Mm -hmm. And eventually the relationship uh, came better and better. But uh, yeah, so we've known ITAC for a long time, and today we have uh, customers around the globe uh, here in Mexico, but uh, in Eastern and Western Europe, in Asia, uh, China, uh, Japan, Philippines, uh, India. So uh, we work together uh, for for uh, uh, for a while, uh, know each other's technology, and uh, know the people. Uh, we saw the good fit with both uh, the people and the technology, and this is what brought us together like this. Yeah, and I think both of those things are important. And Peter, interestingly, you, you know, you do have those relationships um, that have stood the test of time, but also you have joint customers. Tell me a bit about what you knew about Kogiscan and what made them interesting to you and to the uh, Dua Group as, as part of your strategy going forward. Yeah, so from a strategic point of view, of course, we are leading towards IIoT and getting more data in our system to do analytics. And while we're thinking about that strategy, of course, we are thinking about how do we get more data out of the machine, especially the SMT equipment. And of course, it was a short thinking process and we come up with the idea, hey, we should talk to Kogiscan because uh, they're in the market for a long time. Uh, they have developed nice products that could fit to our strategy. And let's see how we can uh, make a joint effort here to uh, fulfill our demand. And uh, yeah, we aligned uh, on this topic, found out that we are thinking in the same direction. And uh, then of course we said, okay, let's uh, make it happen and work together moving forward. Yeah, and you, you talked, um, both of you mentioned that you had joint customers. Tell me kind of how that relationship in, in those existing customers had, had worked in the past. How were you able to fit the two technologies together? What, what, what does that typically look like, Peter? Yeah, what, uh, I think we fit very well because um, Karchi Scan is very close to the machine and do all things close to the machine very well, um, you know, verifying setups, uh, analytics of the SMB equipment and this kind of stuff. And ITEC is more on the higher level uh, MES task, like uh, work order management, interfacing with the ERP systems and this kind of stuff. And uh, this is how we work together and this uh, common customer. So mm. we took care of the work order management on the whole shop floor. Um, and then we connected Kochi Scan for the SMT area, and that actually worked very well. Yeah. So, Phil, if I may, we, we, I mean, we both have a similar vision of what uh, the digitalization journey should be, mm. but we really act at uh, different levels. And, and this is where there's a, a perfect fit between 
uh, both companies. So uh, what we bring to the table uh, is lacking to uh, the Dura Group and ITAC, and what, what they bring to the table is lacking to Kazakhstan. Yeah. Together, we can really take customers through the whole journey uh, from the starting point all the way to where they want to go, basically. Yeah, so that's that's where the good fit is, and that's where our customers see the value. Yeah, yeah I think that's where it gets exciting. So, if you look at the um, you know the joint customer relationships you've had in the past, where you've actually you know you've approached them separately, and they've decided that Kajiscan is their connectivity solution, uh, and that I- ITAC is their is their um, management process solution. Um, how do you see that? changing in the future how do you see that um that kind of customer facing relationship changing and and how will that feel different to the customer peter perhaps you can um you can start us off on that one yeah i think it will not uh, change at all to the customer because we have one face to the customer and we had already uh last week right after we announced our acquisition the first meeting with one of our customers and uh, it's actually uh, straightforward. The, the solution that we present now is that we get more data, do more analytics and this kind of things. And uh, we have seen it last week. Uh, it worked seamlessly together, right? And, and this is actually uh, why it is so natural to do this step, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, MAS is one thing, but MAS need to be enriched to get to IoT with more data from the shop mm-hmm. floor do more analytics, do more prediction, right? And then when you do more prediction, then you have to have more data on your hand. And this is actually the area where I think the customer will see one common solution. And the face to the customer is iTech or is Scan, but both products will work together and then it's one common solution. Yeah, and Vincent, I guess in the past, that means you've you've been talking about your solution, but you've been aware that they've got ITAC in the factory and you've understood how that how that works. Now, I guess it's it's a different situation in that you're actually able to, you know, promote the ITAC solution and talk about how the two different solutions work seamlessly together. Actually, uh, yes, of course, that, that's uh, something we can do. But actually, Kajiscan will continue to operate as an independent uh, uh, company, basically. So, uh, as you know, we've been partnering with partnering with um, equipment vendor and software vendors. So this will not change. So it's not tomorrow. We're not going to say, okay, we integrate only with ITAC. Yeah. We will continue to integrate with other software companies. So whatever uh, our customers choose as uh, their uh, mom or MES, we, we we will still integrate and work with these companies. Mm. Uh, of course, we, we have this uh, relationship with ITAC, but we, we had this relationship with ITAC that has always been a little uh, closer, if you wish. Uh, so the integration between their product and our product is probably uh, better knitted or, you know, uh, I don't know how you want to call it, but uh, uh, there's, there, there's a closer integration there. Um, so, so uh, yes, so we will, uh, we will go out to our Customers will continue doing that. And the thing is, the fact is, ITAC is quite strong in the electronics industry. So uh, anyhow, we do meet them uh, even before this acquisition uh, at a lot of customers, uh, especially uh, especially in Europe and uh, and, and in Asia. Um, But uh, more and more, we're meeting them. And also through uh, some of our partners where they have to integrate their equipment to uh, ITAC software. We hear that a lot. So, um, of course, our uh, equipment partners are thrilled about this acquisition because it's going to make things uh, simpler for them. So. Yeah. And there are kind of two parts of this kind of acquisition, aren't there? There's that integration of the technologies, and I can see that that works really well. But then there's this hugely important integration of the teams. You know, you've got to work very well on a on a on a management level, but every other level within the um, organization, was there was that ever an issue, Peter, or did you consider that something that you felt was really simple? You know, sometimes I think of the analogy of, you know, these guys are Canadians; they're really good at ice hockey. You're Germans; you're you're not too bad at football. Um, 
Thank you for the not too bad. <laughs> I, I, I'm English. I can't go too far there. Um, but you know, then, then, then suddenly you're all one team and you've got to play the play the same sport. How how was that for you? I think I think it's not a problem because uh, first of all we will keep it like we do with Dual as we keep both companies independent. Mm -hmm. uh, that means they run independent. They have their their customers and they have their setup, so that will not change. It's more like supporting each other, right? So for example, technology wise, of course we will share what we do. We can maybe with a digital factory within the Dual Group we do the same thing. All the mm -hmm. companies are sharing what they're doing, try to find synergies and help each other to get on with new technologies and drive that a little bit faster. Because when you're on your own, you have to do everything by your own. And if you're a bigger group, of course, you can do things faster. And that's actually the idea. So they stay independent, they do their business, but they can benefit from the structure that we can offer as a dual group. Yeah. And how does that, how does yeah. that look from your side? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's funny. And I was going to say, of course, we will not play hockey with a big round ball or they will, will not play football with a puck uh, tomorrow uh yeah exactly that that wouldn't work uh, very well but um i mean again it, it all starts with the people and 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 um i'll just i'll just tell you a little bit about the the, the story when peter and i started discussing this, this so peter says okay how about we join forces and say, ah, okay you know kajistan was is doing a was and is doing a very good business and all that. And I said, why, why, you know, why we go there and uh, it's all about the people and all that. And, and you know that um, part of our core values, you know, respect, trust, and well-being are very important. So Peter says, you know what, if we if we could do that, the first thing we want to do is for you to meet with uh, Ralph Dieter, who's the CEO of uh, the Door Group. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it just you know so you know the door group is a f about a four billion euro company so i'm guessing the ceo of uh, the door group is has a busy agenda but he yeah. made like half a day you know he spared half a day to meet with us to make sure that we have alignment with the people so that said a lot and i can i can tell that uh, not only at the ceo level but you know everybody we have similar values where we can work together um, after that as peter said you know we're going to go on with our business and we're going to use we're going to leverage the best of uh what the dual group has to offer what kajiscan has to offer what duality has to offer what itac has to offer uh moving forward and and having these shared values we we, we can do that the good thing also about it is of course we're north american um, they're European based, but they also have a, a good foot, foot in, uh, in Asia. Hmm. Uh, we're on all these markets, of course, but probably not as well uh, entrenched as they are. So we can also leverage that. So, yeah. uh, of course, ice hockey and football, but we can help each other with that. We can help them yeah. at hockey and they can help us at football, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I think that makes sense. You make a really good point about it not being just about iTech and Kodjiscan. Mm -hmm. It's also about the Dur Group. Peter, tell us a little bit, give us a bit, bit of the flavor of what the Dur Group's all about and their, their vision of the Dur Digital Factory. Yeah, I think um, there's, there's two elements on it. Of course, one thing is the digital factory at itself at, uh, at the customer side, mm. which for us is IoT prediction, uh, analytics, and this kind of stuff, right? Um, on the other hand, um, we have also a, a digital factory within the group where we are driving developments together. So within the Dure group, as Vincent said, we are pretty big different departments doing all software, but we try to align in the digital factory all the efforts, look at technology together and make sure that we try to use the same technology, the same platform, doing only things once and even share it. I think the best example right now is do you develop the maintenance manager for their factories basically. And we incorporating that now in our MES, we're adding a few features to it. And then we have one common product that looks from the outside the same because we're using the same style guide, same technology, but inside is developed from two groups. Our customers don't see it, right? But it offers value because we can develop things faster and get things faster to the market. And I think at the end of the day, that's all what matters. 
Yeah. And Vincent, you talked about values and vision, and you've always had a very specific vision of the factory of the future. And, you know, some people have said that your vision started way, way, way ahead of when that was everybody else's vision and everybody, you know, and the market kind of, kind of needed to catch up. How do you feel about that alignment of vision when you look at what's going on in the Dur Group and their, you know, their digital factory concept? Oh, I mean, it's, uh, again, the idea for us to join the Dur Group is to accelerate that vision, you know, and, uh, you know, again, going back to our values, one, one of our values also is impact. So we want to make this uh, industry a better industry. We want to make uh, a better world through this industry, basically, and, and, and we can have much more impact with the door group. Um, as, you, as you mentioned, I mean, back in 99, we were dreaming of what's, what we call today Industry 4.0, basically, and IIoT. So we were dreaming about this before the term was coined. Hmm. Now, uh, you know, we, we all know that this term was coined by Germans, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, Dur has this vision from this industry for that. Oh, so uh, joining the leaders of uh, industry for that. Oh, uh, with a vision that dates more than twenty years. Uh, this is this is a dream come true for us. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense in terms of the vision and and, and in terms of the alignment. Peter, your company was acquired by the Dual Group, what, five or six years ago? Um, 2000, end of 2015, yeah. Yeah, were there, were there gems of advice you were able to give uh, give Vincent as to as to what that acquisition might look like and what a good acquisition to this uh, to this group would feel like? Yeah, I think well, one thing that I enjoy at Dure very much is, uh, as you heard already, meeting Ralph Dieter is not a problem, talking to him as well. And uh, there's very short uh, ways of discussing things. There's quick decisions taking mm -hmm. and uh, not long, too much discussions about it. So we have a problem. We have a thing we want to do. We talk about it. Uh, we go through the facts and we take a decision. And that for me is always amazing that Dure, as the size they are, they are able to take very quick a decision and move forward. And I think uh, that is something that we as iTech enjoy as well very much is that we are not coming to a big organization and everything is changing, right? Uh, actually, we operate similar than before, right? And uh, the rest of the things uh, will be done quick. And that is, I mm. think, important in this industry that you are able to move quick and change things and get on with it because the industry is changing quite a lot right now. Uh, the software market as well changes quite quick. And if you are not quick enough, then you will lose it. So, and I think that's a big advantage of the do group. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge, Vincent, the idea of um, agility and autonomy at the same time where you're still able to, you know, manage your own business, but you have the support of this group and that group is able to listen and make decisions quickly, as Peter says, and has that agility, that that must have been a key factor in um, making your decision and, and attractive for you moving forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, Phil, you've known, you've known us for a while and you, mm. can, you can imagine that we've been approached by different companies uh, to, to join forces. Um, I remember Peter back in 2015, 2016, when he started uh, after this acquisition, and he was telling me how it was, uh, what he was going through, what he was living, and all the opportunities that were created by uh, this acquisition while still managing ITAC, mm. his own business. And, 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 and of course, you know, knowing all that uh, really made the this decision quite easy uh, for us to go there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. And just before we wrap up, guys, Peter, you mentioned that things are changing really fast mm -hmm. at the moment. And I do actually think we're in a pivotal time. I think the whole um, pandemic is, is accelerating digital transformation. It's accelerating innovation. What do you see as your kind of short and medium term vision for the industry, Peter? What do you see as happening in the next few years and how do ITAC and Kogiscan and the whole deer group fit into that? 
Again, in my opinion, you have always two ways of going through this kind of issues like the pandemic that we have right now. So one is you can wait and see what's happening or you can say, okay, let's use the time and accelerate even faster than when everything is over, we are, we are right there. And that's actually what we are trying to do. So what is happening is, that, as I said, the technology change on one hand and uh, the need of companies to get more out of software right so even drive more improvements than we do today and this is going along with the new technology that's available so when you bring everything together now quick right the new technology with the need of the customers uh, then i think you will be on the right track and that's exactly what we're trying to do right now in the pandemic uh, situation because uh, it's better to get people right now Talents are available again, and now is the time to stuff up and uh, and get and go in that direction even faster. And then when everything is over, we should be right there. Yeah. And Vincent, has it been all about adapting and accelerating for you guys during the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, I, I totally agree with uh, Peter. And, and this is the approach we, we've taken for Kajistan, actually, is, uh, okay, there was a pandemic, and when this started, uh, almost a year ago here in uh, North America, uh, what we told the whole uh, company is, we're not gonna stop investing, uh, the, quite the opposite. If, if, if ever business goes down a little bit, that's the best time to invest. So that's what we've done. And, and we, we gave the same advice to our customers. Um, I mean, if, if you look at it uh, in front of us, uh, what we bring to the table is, um, you know, we, we kind of see ourselves as, as a lean MES. So it's kind of a MES made e easy. So if you want to start, uh, you can start, our customers can start easily. Uh, they, they will not have to spend too much money. We even have um, uh, uh, an MES as a service, if you wish, connectivity as a service, mm -hmm. MES as a service. So they can start small, see the benefits. And we can bring them through the whole journey again with, with uh, the Dual Group on IPAC. Um, everything they want to do in their digitalization journey, we can do that. Yeah. So, yes, they should use that, that, that time to start doing the first steps and be uh, agile about it and, and just create value for their company uh, by yeah. going step by step and uh, going through that journey. Yeah. Uh, that would be my advice. And that's what, what, that's what I think is going to happen uh, with most companies. Yeah, and I certainly yeah. see that. And, you know, when I look at what's going on in the U.S., I talk to plenty of EMS companies there, likewise in, in, you know, in Germany and throughout Europe. I think there is a desire to move forward with this, with this digital transformation. People are seeing the value of it. And actually, when you talk to the companies that have perhaps been a bit more resilient, um, during this, I've kind of felt they're the ones that are a little bit further along the digital transformation journey anyway. So I think, you know, I think people are already, already seeing the, um, seeing the dividend. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for talking to me. I'm excited to hear more about, more about the, um, the future of the, of the two companies together as we, as we go forward and look forward to, um, not just talking to you, but talking to customers that are really leveraging both um, both suites of products, which I think is, uh, you know, some some fascinating solutions and should be some really um, significant outcomes for the industry. But in the meantime, congratulations again. Thanks so much for your time. Um, good luck going forward and uh, look forward to talking again in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. welcome.